Hey guys, it's been a while. I always feel like I should start my videos with an apology, but I feel like you guys get by now that I'm not exactly the world's most regular YouTuber. Um, I just haven't had any ideas, so I didn't have anything I wanted to post about, but you might have heard that recently I got into a little bit of a scandal um, during a romantic spectrum awareness week. Um, I was doing some work with Stonewall and they asked me to do a short one minute or less video on how to be an ally to the aromantic community. It was posted on their Twitter and all hell broke loose <laughs> on the Monday and I was pretty much getting trolled all the way to the Friday. Um, and it's something I have uh, spoken about on my Instagram but I'm always aware that the audience on Instagram, the audience on Twitter, and the audience on YouTube are often different. And I always have people saying that they really enjoy my YouTube, um, and then I feel bad because I never post on here. And people have suggested that maybe I should do a sequel to my reading my hate comments video, as I got a lot of those during um, April week. And I thought that's probably quite a good idea because my last video was based on um, a lot of comments I've received for being asexual. Um, I think anti-aromantic attitudes are spoken about a bit less. Um, and I kind of had the opportunity to raise awareness for that. So why not do it here? I think you'll notice that there are some distinct differences between aerophobia and acephobia. Um, there's definitely some patterns in some of these comments. So, uh, yeah, I've got some on my phone. I screenshotted some of the particularly stupid ones. So this is more of a highlight reel, I guess. Um, so I'm not just sitting here talking for like an hour because this video was retweeted like with comment over 600 times. It was viewed over 1,700 times last time I looked. So there was a hell of a lot of comments, hell of a lot of reposts. Um, so it's definitely hard to keep up with all of them, but the sentiments in a lot of the comments are very much the same. And I think that I like to use those kind of strange experiences that I have as like a resource. You can use them as a case study, uh, as an example of um, that these attitudes very much exist. Despite how much people want to say, nobody cares if you're romantic, a lot of people obviously cared based on the attention that video got. So without further ado, let's get messy. Before I start, I don't know if I'm going to be technical and like edit these into the video. So if you actually want to see these comments, um, I'll include like a link in the description that has the video so you can just play a game and find them if you haven't got anything better to do. Um, I've also got some screenshots of them on my Instagram if anyone's like wondering. Um, yeah, otherwise you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm not just a uh, total masochist who's making all this up. All right. Now let's go. If you're aromantic, why would you waste time trying to look sexy? <laughs> Surely you would do the opposite to be left alone, or am I getting confused again? Uh, pick a sapien, you are getting confused again, but I mean, do you think I look sexy? Do I look sexy to you? Oh. I think that's the dark subtext to the ace slash a row shit getting boosted by big platforms as part of progress. It helps rationalize all the horrible trends that keep people from forming relationships and families by making it an identity. I mean, I guess it's true. I mean, I actually don't have family um, or any human relationships. I gave birth to myself. Um, I don't know anybody. I could never give birth to another person, raise or adopt another person. And I don't, I don't even know people. Like what is people? Totally for privileged bitches begging to fit in with LGBTQ+. Begging? I am the VIP. I don't have to beg to fit into anything. Like, what universe is this? I mean, has this bitch ever seen Brief Encounter? No. I haven't seen Brief Encounter. Should I see Brief Encounter? Is it good? I bang anyone named Yasmin Benoir, sight unseen. <laughs> what is... I mean, one. 
you're not gonna bang me because I'm asexual, unavailable, and you're ugly. But I'm just trying to understand what what do you mean by like sight unseen? Like it doesn't even matter what I what I look like or like you don't wanna see me? Like I just I just don't understand what what, what point he's trying to make. It's probably stupid, so whatever. Buzzwords are cheap, but whore cope seems to fit. She's afraid to become who she is. Okay, this is coming from someone called incel ex-boyfriend, so I feel like, I feel like that doesn't require any further explanation. It's all bullshit from the generation raised on antidepressants. Bad antidepressants and asexuality disappears. Wow, what a really stupid theory. <laughs> well done, he thought you said something there. It's so easy to look at these people and see nervous children buckling beneath the weight of meaningless adornments. Okay, one, I turned 25 this year, I'm not exactly a child. Uh, two, the only thing I'm buckling under is my ability to stress complete strangers of a 50 second video. That's, I'm buckling under my own power. Oh my god, this word again. Whore cope for attention whores whose hedonism has forced them to migrate to the final station of human alienation, asexuality. What in the 4chan incel BS is this? I don't, I don't speak incel. I don't know what this means. This bullshit is so confusing to adolescents who haven't fully settled into their sexuality yet. And I don't just mean L slash G, I mean the literal process of going through puberty and trying to wrap your head around romantic slash sexual feelings for the first time. I hate it. You know what? When I was an adolescent, I remember spending so many nights like laying awake in a state of like constant confusion. I mean, you've got trying to get through education, trying to make friends, like worrying about like your physical appearance and your standing in society and your future and your family and the media and the pressures. And yeah, when I think about it, people who didn't experience romantic attraction really were the most confusing bullshit I've ever heard during that time. Like that out of everything going on, that was it. That that was it. So great one, Helena. That was that's a gem of wisdom. Thank you. Someone called same sex not gender attracted at its homophobia <laughs> um, says this is a bit creepy. Wonder if weird trans activists, not trans, use it to have relationships with people who have no sexually attraction to them. It's not because I'm a gay man with a vagina, you're just aromantic. Ugh. Yeah, you don't need to wonder about that because it actually doesn't happen. So basically, we have a bunch of people whose narcissism is so strong they can't consider the feelings of another person but just want to dot 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 fuck that dot dot i just love like the pause it reminds me of that video of bella hadid where she's like homeboy is gonna like get it <laughs> it's like consider the feelings of another person but just want to fuck that like what why the hesitation like what are you trying to say Please stop assuming people care about your sex life or that or lack thereof, you gigantic narcissist. I mean, I didn't actually mention my sex life, but like 170,000 plus people cared, so... Well, Stonewall UK are doing a great job at raising awareness of how exhibitionist narcissists with no personality are identifying as hashtag aromantic. Don't want romance? Fine. Demand other people rework their lives and language because you don't want romance? A narcissism with a touch of sociopathy. Okay, internationally powerful lesbian. Okay. She'd me, she'd me much happier today if they'd let some kids bully her in school a little. <laughs> I mean, some kids did bully me in school, and I've written articles about it for British Vogue, so yeah, I am much happier today having been bullied in school. So you're not wrong, casual gay sex. <laughs> what an at. What an at. Wow. 
these the comments in that tweet are fucking psychotic the biggest bunch of comfortable people claiming prosecution no fucking person in the world wants to persecute you freaks i'm not even going to point out the irony in that one how is being aromantic anything more than just a 2014 tumblr sjw way of calling yourself a narcissist i mean i wasn't on tumblr in 2014 so you tell me if I may be blunt, you probably may not, but whatever. It sounds like they just want to exercise their right to be sexually immoral and never get married. I mean, I fight for my rights to be sexually immoral. I'm actually known for my sexual immorality. If you're aromantic, it means your heart is made of stone. I wouldn't send messages something as tragic as this is positive. You know what is really tragic about this? I'm zooming into this guy's picture and he looks like a badly made wax dummy of Stan Lee. This is, he looks like somebody's grandfather. Like someone come get your granddaddy because he's acting out on Twitter again. Siri, show me the percentage of aromantic identifying persons on SSRIs. Ugh. The paucity of emotions. A difficulty in forming or an inability to form emotional bonds of another is a classic trait of a psychopath. Not something to champion or broadcast unless, of course, you're eager to identify as a Ted Bundy or Juana Barraza. I mean, personally, I've always felt like I have more of like a Richard Ramirez energy. But... While obviously being a romantic has nothing to do with your inability to form emotional bonds with anybody, I feel like if I was incapable of forming emotional bonds to anybody and you did think I had the potential to be like a rapist, pedophile, serial killer, then maybe you shouldn't piss me off. The epitome of excess privilege. We can all see exactly how and why it's done. Our reasons for not going there ourselves, preference for reality, safeguarding the vulnerable, means nothing to these psychopaths. <laughs> what is with the psychopath thing so much? Like, I knew that this was a stereotype, but like, these guys are taking it pretty far. Imagine what would happen if this person dropped the facade, talked through their issues, and such, or switched up their meds. Yeah, I'm sure that if I stopped taking paracetamol once a month, it would really change my life. <laughs> TF, you putting makeup on for then. Not real. You either didn't find the right one or something shitty happened to you to place the emotional barrier. Like the right person isn't necessarily someone that you want to be in like a romantic relationship with right like that is not the epitome of any like human relationship and that does not necessarily mean that you have an emotional barrier but bimbo uber mensch probably isn't you know the connoisseur of human intellect so i'm just gonna let this one go this is the most twisted and sociopathic of all the made-up sexual orientations because I'm in love with literally everyone I know. Roadmap is the easy part. Literally everyone? Literally? Okay, so this person's everyone? obviously trying to quote me here. Don't spread stereotypes about aromantic people having some kind of problem. She's literally wearing a Terminator death machine cyborg on her shirt and covered herself in metal studs and spikes to make herself seem as psycho, inhuman, and emotionally barren as possible. That is a very deep analysis of me for wearing a spiky, <laughs> a spiky bracelet and a green skull on my t-shirt. Um, but I feel like they just really want me to be a uh, inhuman, psycho, emotionally barren person. So I don't think it really matters what I do or say or wear at this point. I'm either a serial killer, psychopath, narcissist, uh, psycho, or virgin? I don't, I don't even know at this point. The fact that most of these identities can be explained in the context of trauma responses and slash or developmental disorders slash learning difficulties says a lot about their disturbing approach to mental health. A fervor wave of narcissists making a late run from the outside in the oppression Olympics, I sprained my damned eyes. 
yet another substitute for actually having a character. No, I don't believe this self-obsessed moron has ever been oppressed one day in her life. Yeah, I mean, as a working class black woman, I mean, oppression, I mean, who is that even? I mean, I, I wouldn't know. Further manufacturing and championing of mental illness to our children. I am actually here to corrupt the children. Aromantic people are taking SSR, this again, are taking SSRIs or have taken SSRIs. I'll make a lot of them think they have no sexual feelings at all. It, being aromantic has nothing to do with your sexual feelings. And your sexual feelings aren't necessarily impacted by the SSRIs, but go off, Rachel the Thinker. Oh, what an ironic username. <gasps> Oh my god. The condition I know that can make one maybe doesn't experience love or connection is psychopath. Oh, here we go again. Because the area of the brain responsible for that doesn't work correctly. That shouldn't be normalized, especially because we have hormones too. Right. I doubt this is just an orientation. Why, well, thank you, Yelin15, for that thesis. Uh, I would say you should get it published, but maybe don't do that because it was stupid. Ooh, YouTuber alert, Angie Speaks says, Peak narcissism. It's okay to be romantic if that's your proclivity, but it also doesn't mean anyone else has to care. Thank you for retweeting and sharing and spreading my video to show that you don't care about my video. That makes sense. Oh, but she goes on. I refuse to take narcissistic identity fetishes who believe that not having their niche proclivities automatically catered to equals oppression seriously. It's such an infantile way of viewing the concept of inclusivity. The gray rock method is the best way to deal with narcissistic people, not giving them the supply they desperately crave. It's difficult though, because they stuff, the stuff they pull is so infuriating. Well, I mean, you know what I find really infantile? Saying you don't care about something, retweeting it, writing a little think piece about it, um, and being really, really pressed and infuriated over a 50 second video that didn't say any of the things that you're describing. Imagine being that loud and that wrong. I mean, it couldn't be me. Anybody watched What We Do in the Shadows? I think she might be an energy vampire. Um, I'm actually more the traditional kind of vampire, like the suck the blood out of your neck, leave your dry carcass on the floor, fly away like a bat kind of vampire. Because I'm old school like that. I hate goths. They creep me up. <laughs> Sorry, that one had nothing to do with being romantic. I just, I love creeping people up. I can't even help it. As I listen to people consumed by these far left ideologies and shit, I'll say it, even physically look at many of them, it really hits you that there is a systematic effort to erode so many of the basic building blocks in our humanity and it really runs deep. I mean, eroding the basic building blocks of our humanity is my number one pastime. It's like Sims 4 and then it's eroding the basic building blocks of our humanity. White people doing this to make themselves feel special and unique, like, by POC people, is just sad. What white, what, what white person are you talking about here? Like, you're literally looking at a video of me and then you're saying that this is white people doing this to make themselves feel special. There are, there are black, aromatic people, you know, never mind. She needs to read up on narcissistic personality disorder, as do most of those like her, such as the trans cultists. There is a huge overlap between like the anti-aromantic people and the anti-asexual people and then like the transphobes. Like, this is like the same group of people, I swear to god. How does this differ from psychopathy? Oh my god, Griffin 9C! It's like a broken record over here. VT underscore Iceman says, so basically, she, presuming it is a she, just likes getting rattled with no strings attached. I mean, the only thing rattling me right now is this guy trying to make a point. But okay. 
Sounds like Yasmin is on a desperate quest for her victimhood badge. A romantic, that's a really good try, Yaz. A week is a nice touch, but word of advice, if you want to sell the aromantic thing, it's best not to look like a backing singer from a 1980s new romantics band. Okay, I do not like it when random people call me Yaz, but I'm actually trying to look like a 1980s new romantic singer. And I'm just going to take that part as a compliment. Stay off the crack, kids. Alright, this person just says, show me on the doll. If that is like a reference to like, show me on the doll where they touched you, then that is like really messed up. To people swimming in delusion of their own grandiosity, validation is like crack cocaine. I mean, I feel like if I had to choose, I'd just go for normal cocaine, but whatever. It's like they've renamed narcissistic personality disorder. This again. If you're incapable of romantic love, there's something deeply wrong with you, just as there is something deeply wrong with parents who can't love their children or people who can't make meaningful friendships. For me, as a very romantic person, this tweet is very alienating and oppressive. I'm crying and totally devastated by your attack on romantic people. Like me, who suffer from everyday oppression only because they're trying to be who they really are. Shame on you, Stonewall. Can I get those tears in a large? Encouraging an entire generation to adopt an identity void of romance, love, and commitment will lead to an entire generation of in 20 years with no identity and suffering from desperate loneliness. Stonewall, HRC, and the rest are absolutely evil. <sighs> People incapable of romantic attachment are either psychopaths or garden variety awful humans. People who simply prefer to be unattached may be perfectly fine as long as they're honest and upfront. Garden variety? Low status incels. Low status. Okay, one person said, I just realized aromantic is the leftist version of incel. And then someone commented saying, nah, aromantic equals slut with extra victim points. <laughs> Hilton Holloway says, that it is the very definition of decadence. And personally, I'm gonna take that as a compliment. When you're single and an attention-seeking gullible fool. Mm. Oh gee, there's an aromantic spectrum too. Of course there is. Otherwise your net for catching all the gullibles would be too small, wouldn't it, Stonewall? Okay, I think this is the part people just start hating on Stonewall. Um, Obviously, they need to hear that they have issues, preferably by a medical professional. What WTF is romantic attraction, even the split attraction model is bullshit. Stonewall, you're embarrassing yourself again. I mean, why do you need to ask what romantic attraction is? If you already know what the split attraction model is, to form an opinion on it, then you know what romantic attraction is, so why are you wasting characters? I don't know. It's a nasty underpinning for men to pursue women without conscience. Because the only aromantic people in existence are men, obviously. <sighs> okay, I think I'm gonna end there. I could literally go on forever. There were so, so many comments, but I think you all get the gist by now. Um, I hope that this hasn't been too much of an upsetting, unenjoyable video. Um, I didn't create this because I wanted to spread negativity or make people feel bad or kind of give power to the douchebags leaving these kind of comments. I did it because I just wanted to raise awareness that these attitudes do exist, that aerophobia does exist. We do live in a society that places romantic attraction on a huge pedestal as being the epitome of human interaction, obviously, and there is a lot of stigma that comes with being aromantic and... I just wanted to create something that could be a semi-entertaining resource for people that might not have seen it on Twitter and might not have seen it on Instagram. Um, thank you all for sticking with me and for showing me an incredible amount of support while all of this was going on. It was not all doom and gloom. I got so, so, so much love. And 
I am very appreciative of all of it. I'm appreciative of my subscribers on YouTube, even though I barely update my YouTube. I am sorry about that. But if you have any video ideas that you want me to do, let me know. If you want to see more of me, check me out on Instagram because I use it a lot more often. It's my favorite platform, at the Yasmin Benwa. And you can also find me on Twitter if you want the messiness. Also, at the Yasmin Benwa, and feel free to like, share, subscribe, whatever. I really don't mind that much, to be honest, but, you know, I probably won't be able to monetize this video anyway. Um, but, but I want you all to stay safe, stay happy, socially distance, wear your masks, and I will see you on the other side. Until next time, bye!